Good afternoon. This is Ron Lunsford with Wichita SCORE. Thank you for attending. Uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about traditional business plans and then get into the one page business plan uh, information. Our topic today is uh, one business plan and one page business plan and a little bit of uh, background if you don't mind. Uh, SCORE is a national organization. We have over 10,000 volunteers uh, available to assist you uh, with your small business problems. Our mentoring services are free. We're all volunteers and we don't charge for our services. Uh, since 1964, SCORE's provided expert uh, volunteer mentoring to more than 11 million entrepreneurs and small business owners. During 2019, the last year that we have statistics available, we helped almost 30,000 new businesses get started. We helped create 67,000 non-owner jobs, plus the 30,000 that uh, included the owners. <clears throat> uh, John, next, please. Thank you for being here. We're, we're not, uh, SCORE would not be uh, what it is without uh, uh, your uh, needs and things like that. It was created in 1964 uh, with an arrangement with Small Business Administration. Uh, they were being inundated with people requesting uh, SBA loans and did not have uh, business plans. So they thought that SCORE could help them. Uh, and we've been uh, pushing, encouraging, and uh, uh, coaching people with their business plans since uh, for over 50 years. Where is your business going? If you're wanting to get to the top of the skyscraper, you need to get started. And one of the best ways that you can do that is put it down on paper and see your dreams come true. Next. Our resource partners, Wichita Public Library is a very key uh, organization for our close in area around Wichita. They are also available in terms of electronic uh, media. <clears throat> and John will get into that a little bit later. The Small Business Administration, SBA.gov, offers some excellent ideas. SCAD, South Central uh, Kansas Economic Development District, uh, SCAD.org is another resource for you. And of course, SCORE, Wichita, uh, excuse me, www score.org is the way to get a hold of us. Next. And next. Agenda today, we'll talk a little bit about the traditional business plan. We'll also discuss a little on the business canvas model, and then we'll get into the one page business plan. Next. Why do I need a business plan? Next becomes a foundation for planning as the business grows. Okay. Communicate your ideas, to, your ideas to you and others. It gives an objective view of your business idea and it enhances your business's strength and weakness and works on the weaknesses, trying to improve, okay? Definition of a business plan, we have two primary purposes. First and foremost, it should be helped, used to help run your company by analyzing your plan for marketing, sales, manufacturing, uh, online uh, presence, you can greatly improve your chances for success. Next. Second purpose is the reason that most clients uh, request plan advice from SCORE. You, uh, you approach a financial institute, uh, institution, a lender, and he says, Show me your business plan before I can consider you. You have to demonstrate that you have a roadmap to success. Banks want to mitigate their, okay. Key takeaways in our presentation today. The choice of business is determined by your personal set of circumstances. There's no correct uh, entity choice for everyone and circumstances can change over time. Good examples are current year. No one, no one forecast COVID. Nobody had forecast that uh, a lot of the businesses would have to close and now are just reopening on limited basis. 
Uh, also, it helps. You need to know that you have the basics down on paper and convincing uh, for yourself before you ask somebody else to help you make that decision. Next. We have some myths. Every business page has the same format and 30 pages long, 40, 50, 80, whatever you want to, whatever you may have heard. Business plans do not have to be 30 pages long. Once written, business plan goes right into the file drawer. Doesn't have to be updated, so on and so forth. That's not true. Your best time to update a business plan is as business changes. If uh, you had been doing uh, business pre-COVID, that uh, event changed the uh, environment for you and you needed to be looking at uh, something different. A third, a 30 page business plan with lots of financial information will get the bank loan that you need to start or grow your business. Sorry, it depends on what the financial information shows and how convincing your plan is to the lender. Next. Traditional business plan follows this format. Your concept or your uh, <clears throat> executive summary a description of the industry, marketing analysis, so on down the line. And over there in number 10, it includes your financial projections, showing how much do you want to borrow, how soon you can repay, and how likely it is that you're going to be showing a business. And if you're offering uh, uh, interest into angel investors or somebody like that, you might express how much business ownership you're willing to give up in exchange for the money. Next. One good place to start is score.org. Uh, we have a complete business plan template that you can use. Uh, you download the information, change it to make it yours, and then, and then you've got something you can present to others. This is the typical uh, items that you can find in the financial uh, statement, financial templates. Uh, a startup cash the, uh, opening, a 12-month cash flow, a three-year profit and loss, uh, a projected balance sheet, and finally, but not uh, the least important, showing a break-even analysis. When are you going to reach the point where your initial investment, excuse me, your uh, startup costs, and your uh, uh, ongoing monthly expenses have been offset by revenue from whatever product or service you're selling. Next. Uh, this came out of the Startup Roadmap series. It uh, gives you a quick indication. If you're wanting to do ask somebody to help uh, lend you money or invest in your business, business plan may be best for you. If you're real detail oriented and like to use words and lists, business plan also. And if you want to think, want time to think about your business, same thing. If you're in a hurry, then you consider the business model canvas or the one page business plan. Next. This uh, is the business canvas model uh, made popular by uh, strategizer uh, it's been around since about 2008. It's gaining, gaining more acceptance. Um, if you'll take a look in the middle of the top table, it says value propositions. Which one of your customers' problems are you going to solve? What needs are you satisfying? What pain are you removing? What is your specific product and service? What features? match the customer's needs, especially the ones that the customer is willing to pay for. Number two, customer segments. For who, whom are we solving the problem or fulfilling a need? Who are our customers? How can we describe them in generic terms? Uh, what kind of social economic background have they got? What kind of uh, uh, cash do they have available to spend? Does the value proposition match their needs? 
Is it single-sided or multi-sided uh, market? Uh, an example would be uh, uh, our uh, GPS. In the cars, we get navigation uh, systems. That's a big value to the uh, drivers because it helps us get from point A to point B. But a second market for that uh, navigation system are all the businesses out there that want their uh, product or service uh, readily available to the customer. So they give them, here are the restaurants that are nearest you. Here are the hardware stores, so on down the line. Box three, through which channels do your customer segments want to be reached? Do they want to be reached online? Do they want uh, some of the older markets, uh, older customers, maybe interested in print media? Uh, some of the younger ones, um, just give it to me electronically. Four, about your customer relations. How will we get, keep, and grow our customers? Getting a customer can be expensive. Keeping a customer is not near as expensive. Some say it's about one-tenth of the cost of getting a new customer. Then we move over to five key activities. What key activities do value uh, propositions require? Also six, what key resources? What, who are, who are going to be your people that help you get the job done? What vendors? What suppliers? Uh, what shippers? And number seven, who are your key partners? And you can list those very quickly if you think about it. And that's the point of this business canvas model or a one page is to list uh, key people. So it makes, you, it makes it real easy to talk about who's doing what. Number eight, revenue streams. What is the revenue model? How are we making uh, money? What are our pricing techniques? For what value are customers willing to pay? If you take and uh, put your hand over uh, the segment of the screen, one, four, two, down to eight, those are all uh, costs, excuse me, those are all revenue uh, attributes. Seven, uh, five, six, seven, and eight are your cost attributes. So right there you can see a lot of things that have to do with uh, making money with your business and you can see that this is uh, primarily uh, focused on who's your market and how are you going to satisfy it. Next John. This is the summer one uh, lean canvas. Uh, <clears throat> the YouTube uh, you can copy off of the uh, recording. In fact I'd recommend if you want to uh, youtube.com and put in one page business plan or you can put in uh, a business model canvas and get a lot of short videos that will help you. The arrows there, the small arrow shows customers uh, sending uh, needs to you and then you're uh, set and they're sending over the request for whatever product or service you're providing. And the big one is uh, if you've got something you can help the customer uh, with a secondary. Perhaps you can think of in terms of, hey, customer signed up for a particular software or an app or something like that, very little charge. But every time he uses it, he's sending you more money. Next. Here's Lean Canvas. It's another takeoff. The blocks are ordered a little differently, but the uh, they communicate this way, the same way. Next, the must-haves sections of your one-page business plan are concept, market. How do you know what your uh, what those are? Economics and your risk and assumptions. Next, your basic idea, what you do and why, explains your concept. Remember. If there's a problem and you've got the solution, that's an opportunity to make money. The concept needs to be clear, compelling, and have a detailed plan of action, how you're going to make it happen. 
articulate the concept and its unique value proposition. We've had a lot of customers, uh, clients come in and say, my product is unique. There's not another uh, competitor in the United States. Uh, Google may not be our friend, but you, uh, you could uh, do good, do yourself a lot of good, if you just use it or one of the other search engines, put in your ge uh, generic names and see what pops up in terms of co competition. I remember sitting there with another mentor, and the lady says, Our, I, my idea is unique. And he pops in the Google uh, search, and he says, well, you've got three competitors in Wichita, and it looks like 12 in Kansas. Uh, have you considered how to, where your product fits with, their, with that market? Also, what's, a value, what's valuable to the customer? What kind of benefit are you... Uh, providing or what kind of pain are you solving what kind of need are you meeting next your market who are they how do you identify them what kind of market segment how do you characterize them demographics geography lifestyle um, <clears throat> quantify how many are there how and how many have an incentive or ability to give you their money. Uh, I will go back on segment and say, if you're trying to communicate uh, with the older generation, uh, we kind of like phone calls. Uh, we work some with email. If you're looking at the uh, uh, middle market, uh, social media will work for you. If you're looking for the millennials, and you're wanting to get in touch with them, you may have to text them to say you'd like to talk to them on the phone. Next. How do you know? Do your market research. Uh, talk to your customers and put the findings in the plan. Talk to your friends and family. Does it make sense? So on down the line. You can do surveys. Monkeysurvey.com, I believe it is. Uh, give you 10 questions to ask. You can go out uh, to your friends on that one. You can form focus groups. You can do interviews. If you've got something that can go to a trade show, uh, consider that. Uh, maybe pardon with somebody that uh, appeals to a similar market but that you're not competing with. Social media, be viral. Blogs, Facebook, Twitter, there are lots of different choices. And you might even consider some giveaways. Uh, and then go into secondary market research. Next. Economics. What kind of resources do you need? What are the main costs? Are they fixed or variable? Fixed has to do with uh, expenses. <clears throat> Things like rent, insurance, uh, some utilities are the same month after month after month. Some are variable. Um, one might be uh, uh, air conditioning costs. It'll be high in the, in the uh, summer and lower in the winter. What's the price of this product? How much profit do you make per item sold? How are you going to do your pricing? Uh, that's a a subject that needs very careful study. How many customers do you need to make it bre and to reach the break-even point to achieve a profit level that you, uh, what you are achieving and what you want? Which of your product service offerings can you make money on? Which or can you not? Why would you sell something that you can't make money on, unless it's a tie-in to something that? makes you more money. Next. Business entrepreneurship deals with risk. There's just no way around it. That, that's the part of the definition that you hold yourself out uh, as a merchant or a supplier to provide something and you take uh, a business risk in doing so. So almost everything in terms of a business has some risk associated with it. 
if you start uh, this segment and point out what kind of risk and, and assumptions you've had to make, it demonstrates to your reader that you fully understand what you're getting into. It gives you an opportunity to explain contingencies. It answers key questions before the lender or investor uh, has to ask them. What kind of pricing assumptions are you in? Cost assumptions. Use this opportunity to show, your, show off your deep knowledge of your business opportunity. Next. Remember, you're writing this down uh, for somebody else to read. When you get, get started on it, different people look for different things. If your friends and family are looking at it, they're wanting to see the golden opportunity, how you're going to do business, and want to be behind you uh, fully in uh, making your investment. Also breaks up a point, be sure that your family is uh, involved and concur with your de decision. Starting a small business is kind of like bringing another person to the table and their need, the business needs often uh, interfere with the family needs. Dad, we'd love to go to the lake this weekend. Well, my problem is business got to be open so you can afford to go to the lake. If you've got lenders, they, uh, they're going to look at how much debt you're going to take on, what's your ability to repay, and how are you reducing the risks that are in, they're involved with. Remember, all they're getting uh, for their investment is a little bit of interest. They want to be repaid. Uh, if you've got staff and employees, it helps. the business plan helps uh, show them where you're going and what role they play. And if you, if you decide that you want to go out for – uh, outside investors, they want to know what your ability is to grow value, what the potential return is, and ability to ensure a return to them. Next. The big pitfalls business plans. One of them, clarity. Watch the jargon. Uh, have somebody else read it, proofread it, and make sure that uh, it's understandable, it communicates clearly. Uh, also expect that it's realistic, especially the financials, the market sizing. Uh, one person said, hey, I'm going to put put a retail store next to Kellogg. Look at my traffic count. Those people aren't stopping. So that's not, uh, that's probably way too optimistic for a market. It's not, it may not be a bad idea, but you, you know, you understand what I'm saying. Provide scenarios. Be conservative or more conservative. Think about bootstrapping. Had a client one time wanted to open a fitness center. She and uh, her husband found a place to, to lease. They were down in Derby. <clears throat> they couldn't afford all of the uh, fitness equipment to get started, so they took it from their own home gym and slowly bought more, bought more, and uh, became, became more professional. Another pitfall is flexibility versus being rigid. Be able to predict the unpredictable and do updating on the plans as needed. If you've got continuity and consistency problems, fix them in your uh, description. Nobody likes an executive summary that says we're going to uh, uh, borrow $75,000 and the financial uh, statement numbers so that it shows that you need $100,000. Be consistent throughout. Next. Key takeaways today. Determine what you, what you need to go into the business planning process. You can even sit down and talk with your banker a little bit. Get an idea of what he's going to be looking for, what she's going to be looking for. What is your focus? What are your expectations? Uh, person wanting to... Uh, start a new business and they're going to be profitable in two months and uh, make a million dollars before the end of the year is pretty rare. Start thinking about your team. These are people that are going to be helping you get the job done. Think of the acronym BAIL or BAILS. 
banker, accountant or bookkeeper, your insurance agent or broker, lawyer, and SCORE. We offer free mentoring. We'll help you uh, make that business plan uh, shine. We won't write it for you, but we will help you get it done. Be sure to utilize both professional and social networks. Get immediate feedback as far as your writing uh, and ask the all important what if questions. How do you solve situation if you've got a nice business going and a competitor moves in next door and posts a great big sign that says lowest prices? It's such a great location. Somebody else on the other side says, uh, walks in, starts at his store, and says, great inventory, a big sign. That's when you have to stop and think, and, hey, what if I just put main entrance over my door, and they'll find me first? Next. It's your turn. What is your unique value proposition, and what co the customer segments are you appealing to? Next. John will take about three minutes so that they can uh, have a chance to write down what they think their unique value proposition is. Okay. If you don't have a unique value proposition, why would you go in business? If it's only unique for a very small niche uh, market, then uh, that's, that's going to limit how much business you can do. Unique value proposition is something that says your product is better than the rest of the market and you can command a, a better price, a better market uh, share than the competitors. If you're having trouble with the unique value proposition or what is my key attribute in terms of selling, come talk to us. We'd be glad to help you sort that out. Sometimes you've got a great idea and a little brainstorming will help you determine which markets you should go for. We're not done yet. We see that customer segment is the other se uh, piece of information that you need. What customers are you selling to? How, how do you identify them? Um, they all can't look like uh, the guy that or the gal that's on the front of a magazine. You're probably going to want to do the situation of creating an avatar, a, an image of uh, what most of your customers are going to look like. And then you can pitch your product, set your uh, pricing, advertising, and other things to appeal to that market. Next. Things to consider. Your business plan is a roadmap for your business. The care which you take in preparing it will show how serious you are about your business. Pre presentation, content, do your homework. Make your financial uh, projections as realistic as possible. Do not under overestimate sales and operating expenses or uh, overestimate the time it takes to get things done. And do not underestimate your capital requirements to start or expand in your business. No lender. Think of it from your standpoint if you were the customer. No lender likes you uh, to walk in and say, hey George, I'm 75% done, I've spent all my money and I still need another 20 grand. Well, it's a new decision for the, for the lender whether they want to be in that business or not. 
if you're unable to estimate uh, your capital requirements, then maybe some of your other numbers are suspect. Next. Simple Steps is a six, six module uh, set that's available uh, from uh, SCORE. And the easy way to do it is just go to score.org, search uh, block and put in simple steps and that uh, lead will pop up. You can work through the online uh, modules and download the free guide to get practical information, help you get started with your small business. Next. Another key resource is the Small Business Administration. Uh, SCORE is partially funded through a cooperative agreement uh, with the uh, Small Business Administration. Next. This is the SBA uh, homepage. You click on Business Guide. The first thing that pops up in Plan Your Business is Market Research and Competitive Analysis. Don't think that you know all of, about your particular business unless you've been in a few years. This is where you, you go out and you dig up information and confirm what you're look, uh, confirm that you're uh, getting into a good situation. The next step is writing your business plan. Next. As you scroll down uh, through writing your business plan, it takes you through the traditional plan. It also has lean business plan as a, as a bullet. It's a st uh, the startup uh, formats are uh, like charts that use only a hand handful of elements. They describe your, your value proposition, customers' finances. They're useful in tr visualizing trade-offs. Next. Lean startup format, first thing, value proposition. We keep harping on, is, is there a market for your product or service? If there's not, probably time to think about it again. Uh, you must have a co clear and compelling statement about what your company brings to the market. I listened to a webinar about three weeks ago and a guy talking, he says, about 20% of the businesses that opened their doors really didn't have a market and that's why they're closing them. You need to be sure you've got uh, something that your customer wants. Next. Customer relationships. We keep harping about knowing your customers. Well, they're the ones with the money and they, they're the ones who are gonna make you or break you. How do you interact with them? Is it automated or personal? Online? Think about the customer experience from start to finish. In fact, uh, do a trial run when you open up a new uh, item and go through the process and check to see how the, how the uh, process flows. If there are glitches, you'd like to know it first rather than have your hundredth customer mention it and say, hey, did you know? Next. Lean, lean Start format also considers channel, customer relationships. How does the customer react, interact with you? So on, next. What are the key activities that you need in order to complete the sale? What are your key resources? If you've got a resource that you can leverage and create value for your customer, do it. Uh, down there in the highlights, if it's a woman-owned business, if it's veteran-owned, if it's Native American, uh, if it's in the hub zone businesses, and if you don't know what that is, SBA be glad to uh, explain it. Use those resources to help improve uh, your chances of success. Next. We also talk about key partnerships, revenue streams, and uh, cost structure. Will your company focus on reducing costs or maximizing value? Define your strategy. 
then list the most sig significant cost you'll face when getting there. 50 years ago, there was a, a there's a lot of competition in the fire mail industry. One company came out and said, we're going to be the low cost producer. Well, that worked pretty good until they started looking at having to uh, replenish capital investment, things like that. It's not always best to have the lowest price. Think of it in terms of if everybody else is at a particular market level and you've got uh, something that is unique or premium product, you need to be charging more for that. That means that you could stay in business longer. Next. Key lessons. Business plan needs to be tailored to your situation. What is your purpose? Who is your audience? And are, is the message clear when you get ready to uh, sit down and talk to them? It can be a launch point to, for the lender to simply say, explain this a little bit to me. It, we do recommend that your business plan be updated at least once a year or when your market changes, such as your current situation. And a business plan is a necessary step but it's no guarantee of obtaining funds. Uh, we'll, we'll point out a lot of lenders like to see 20% what we call skin in the game. If you're wanting to, uh, if you think your business is going to cost you uh, $100,000, the lender's probably going to expect you to put up 20 of that, 20,000 uh, as your investment. So you know that you're, uh, really invested, really uh, feel good about the, the business proposition. If you don't have the uh, collateral, then you need to take a look at uh, family, friends, others that can invest in you, that are willing to risk their money to make your business dream come, home, come true. Next, several things to consider. Again, the choice of the business is determined by your personal set of circumstances. If you've got no experience in fast food, fast food probably isn't the direction you want to go. If you want to go out and spend a little time learning about it, getting educated about it, uh, and show that you can become an expert, then the uh, lender might feel a little more comfortable with it. No one correct choice. Circumstances do change over time. It might be a good point to, uh, to mention that there are a lot of uh, people in my age group that are beginning to age out. And if you're wanting uh, to buy a business, if you see something that you're interested in, go chat with the owner, owner and see if he or she is interested in selling. They might even carry the loan for you uh, to help you uh, make the changeover. Also, Another to consider, understand the basics before you make a decision. Next. This sample is uh, taken from the uh, sample lean uh, business plan, uh, the SBA. Uh, it com comes up with uh, these next two pages. Wooden green toys uh, uh, states their identity. They state the problem, the, their solution, and that helps them define who their target market is. So, for if you're wanting to sell toys to children age three through 10, your target market's the adults, specifically parents and grandparents, who wish to give the toys, the learning experience, the uh, fun and joy to their children or grandchildren. Next. This is the rest of it. The competition. It's a part of a niche market. Companies all sizes. Wooden uh, grain toys is going to sell directly to the customers at craft fairs and online. They're not going to have a, a storefront, uh, initial, at least initially. What are their marketing activities? What kind of expenses do they expect? Pretty low cost, everything uh, mentioned there. Team and key roles. 
right now they've only got one owner and that's all as they as the uh, profits increase then they'll add uh, employees to assist with the uh, marketing and they'll begin to advertise in specific te uh, target markets especially in advance of the holiday season next this is where you can get information i included this slide I'm, i realize there's way too many uh URLs there, but all of them can be beneficial uh, when you get ready to go. Point out again, score.org. If you're interested in a mentor, go to score.org. There's a find a mentor button, or you can do a slash find dash mentor uh, behind the .org, and it'll get you set up to uh, inquire about a uh, um, a mentor that will help you uh, get your business plan organized. SCED, South Central Kansas Economic Development District, uh, is uh, an excellent uh, source. They end up, uh, they have some uh, what they call microloans, up to $50,000. And you don't have, a, may not have to have a whole lot of uh, uh, financial uh, information for them to help you out on that. ksbiz.kansas.gov is the small business portal for Kansas. And business.gov has some great business ideas. Network Kansas uh, is a source for a lot of educational programs, including the library, including uh, SBA, including uh, uh, SBDC. Next. And the one that you're already familiar with, wichitalibrary.org. You click on events, search for SCORE for our next workshop. In terms of research tools, A to Z database, EBSCO, small business reference, John's going to touch on those in just a few minutes. I just want to make sure that you, you know that you can find this information, and it's quite helpful. Next. We're available to help you. And there's over 10,000 others to, for you to choose from if we uh, don't have the expertise that you're looking for. Next. And I see one item in chat. And that's just a reminder that if you have questions, please put them in the chat feature. Um, Since this is recorded, the chat will also be recorded, and any questions that you ask, if, if I can get enough identification information from you, we'll get back to you. I thank you very much. Uh, as I say, if you've got questions, put them in the chat feature, and uh, John, I think I'm done. Okay, we're going to switch gears now and talk about the library resources for small business. Uh, the Wichita Public Library has print and digital resources for all aspects of small business. And this includes books on starting a business, business plans, marketing, accounting, management, and many other aspects of business. Our electronic databases, which Ron mentioned, are the A to Z database, the Small Business Reference Center, and Business Source Premier. And I'll be doing live demonstrations of those in just a few minutes. Our library staff is available to apply their knowledge in the following areas. Market research, finding lists of competitors, finding lists of potential customers, sales leads, sample business plans, numerous business directories, detailed business profiles, business articles from magazines, trade journals, newspapers, business journals, and academic journals. And we also have resources for nonprofit organization, which includes grant funding resources. Uh, we partner with Wichita SCORE throughout the year to offer free small business programs at the library. These include programs like Simple Steps to Start Your Business, One Page Business Planning, 
social media marketing, business plans for nonprofits, and QuickBooks. We have uh, currently 45 PCs with Microsoft Office Access. We also have Chromebooks that can be checked out for three hours. And we have copy, fax, and printing services in our conference room. I'm going to demonstrate the small business databases now. So to access these resources, you would need a Wichita Public Library card. If you do not have one, they are free to get. You can stop by at any branch, customer service desk. Um, they'll ask for something like a photo ID, like your driver's license, and they'll give, sign you up in about five minutes with a free library card. Once you have that, you have 24 seven access to our small business databases. And to get to them, you'll start at our Wichita Public Library website, which we're currently showing. The address is wichitalibrary.org. To get started, you'll go to Research Tools, click that link, and we'll take you to a list of the library databases. When you click on View All Databases, it takes you to an alphabetical list of all of the subscription databases the library has. The first one we're going to look at is the A to Z database. Uh, Ron mentioned market research and finding competition for your business plan. This is my go-to source for finding out how big your market is, whether that's locally, uh, statewide, or nationwide. You can also find out who, is, who your competition is, uh, jump into their websites and find out what their pricing is who their target audience is. You can do some competitive analysis as well. And you can also use it to get sales leads, uh, potential customers, and also do uh, business to business opportunities. So at this point, when you're at home and you click on the A to Z database, it's going to ask for your library barcode number, which is on the back of your library card. And it'll ask for the last four digits of your phone number. And that will give you uh, 24 access to the database that we're in right now, A to Z. Little information on A to Z, they're a business information provider located out of Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, they've been in business uh, for over 20 years and have detailed information on over 30 million businesses, as well as 240 million residents. Uh, they have uh, contracted with indeed.com so you can do job searching through this database as well. Um, the first area here you can search for a, a simple business by putting in the business name and where it's located to bring up a profile. And the section over here you can find any resident by putting in the person's name. Again there's information on over 240 residents. 240 million residents, so big database. Down here below, you'll see some additional databases to get more advanced information, things like mailing lists, sales leads, emails, um, 30 million businesses and, and executives around the country, uh, 2 million new businesses. If a new business has just started in the last year or so and has signed up with the state's security, uh, Secretary of State's office, They'll be listed in this uh, database. So if you have a product or service that uh, targets new businesses, this is a great tool to use to identify those as potential customers. If you have a product or service that deals in healthcare and you're trying to reach out to uh, healthcare professionals, they have a database of 12 million healthcare professionals that you can search by specialty, state of license, and geographic location. Over here on the residence side, information on 240 million residents, and you can search by income level, home value, uh, geographic uh, location, uh, or lifestyle information. So that includes things if you wanna find out uh, pet owners, or motorcycle owners, or boat owners, uh, people that are into cooking, any, any type of lifestyle, uh, this can help you identify who those people are. Uh, just for homework, you may 
go into this database and put your name in there and see what kind of information is, is out there on you. I think you may be a little surprised. Uh, they say there's not a, as much privacy in the world as there used to be. That, uh, but you go in, you'll find out it'll probably have your age, uh, your gender, it'll have your address. Uh, it'll even have a, a Google link that will uh, allow a person to click on your address and show a, a Google uh, Earth images uh, street view of, of your residence, uh, which is a little scary. Uh, <laughs> it'll also have your telephone number if you have a landline. If you have a cell phone number, those are not listed. Those are not publicly available, so they won't, will not be in this database. Uh, but it will have your uh, census information, so it'll, based on your zip code, it'll have your average income, household income for the zip code, and also the average home value. So quite a bit of information on, on all the people that are in this database. If your product or service uh, can target somebody that has just moved into a new home or has moved into a new apartment, this database here has 350,000 new movers and the homeowners that are added weekly. So you can get an idea of who's moving into different zip codes. You may want to target your business towards them if you have a product or service that can help solve a problem for somebody that's just moved, like if they need landscaping or lawn mowing services, for example. And then finally, there's a universal search here, which searches all of the uh, databases at once. So I'd like to do a, a sample search for you um, using the 30 million businesses. I'll click on get started. And it will bring up a screen of different parameters that, that we can search by. So you'll see here on the left side, there's geographic uh, selections you can do, state, city, metro area, county, zip code. Uh, you can even limit it to the address if you want to narrow, narrow things down to street level. You can also do map-based searches. So if you want to find all the uh, businesses that are in a certain boundary, say a mile around your location, you can certainly do that. Or if you have a point to point, if you go out to the airport every day, you can start at your home and have all, map out all of the businesses en route to the airport. So it's a very useful tool. You can search by business keyword type. So this is similar to the yellow pages. You can put in uh, any, any keyword and it'll bring up a listing of uh, business types. You can also search by industry group. You can search by home-based businesses, business type codes, and then there's industry codes. SIC stands for Standard Industrial Classification Codes, and what those are are numeric codes that identify a specific industry or business. If you're not sure what your, your uh, industry code is, you can put in a similar business to yours bring up their profile and it'll tell you what the, uh, the industry codes are. NAICS codes, uh, NAICS stands for North American Industry Classification System. It's a little bit of a newer industrial code that covers some of the newer type industries of the last 20 to 25 years. So if you think of your Googles, your Facebooks, your Amazon, a lot of your online businesses, those weren't really around 30 years ago. So NAICS codes are an expanded code to include those newer type information services businesses. Um, you've got some other ways to search by business name and executive. And you'll see you can also click by email presence. I get asked frequently when people are looking for email lists, how can I track down the emails for a particular business? Well, with the email presence, you can click that and limit the number of profiles to come up that have email addresses only. So you can target that. And at any time, you can download this into a spreadsheet. So you can put it into Excel um, and have those uh, put into your own database and uh, manip manipulate the data that way. You can also search by business size, uh, either employee size, say one to four, five business employees, all the way up to 10,000 plus employees. I use this when people are trying to target certain size companies. Uh, if they only want to deal with small mom and pop businesses, we'll just target one to five employee businesses. 
Also, so, uh, revenue, annual revenue sales. Um, you can start at 500,000 and less if you want to target small businesses. Mid-sized businesses might be one to five million. Uh, your Fortune 500 companies are going to be billion dollar plus revenues. So you can search by business size. Uh, next area is the phone, fax, and toll-free number area of the database. You can also limit uh, your search criteria by ownership. So if you want to target only women-owned businesses or only men-owned businesses, you can select that. You can list, uh, select public ownership, public corporations or, or private ownership. Uh, if it's a small business indicator, you can pick that. Also a franchise. And they have EIN numbers, employee identification numbers in this database. And a few, few of the other selections you can do are uh, estimated annual expenditures. So if you're wanting to find out how much they spend in different areas, whether it's rent or utilities or PCs, you can get that information. You can search by the year they were established. So if you only want to find out businesses that are, have been in business for at least 10 years or 15 years, you can make sure there are established businesses in your list. You can search by credit rating. Does the company and business pay their bills on time? Uh, this credit rating is listed in each business profile, which I'll show you here when we do a sample search. Uh, so you can see what their credit rating is and, and if they pay their bills on time. Uh, you can get access to all the Fortune 1000 companies in this database. You can get all the nonprofit organizations. So if your product or service can benefit a nonprofit group, uh, that's available. Uh, county population is a search criteria as well as manufacturer. You can identify import and exporters, uh, executive gender, the website URL presence, website name, square footage, and finally number of PC, PCs. So I'll do a search here on uh, an example that I've had recently. I had a person that had a janitorial business and they wanted to search Wichita for all of the attorney's offices in uh, Wichita. So they asked me how to do a search and how they could identify that group. So we would go to city and select our state, Kansas. It'll bring up a list of cities. We'll start it putting in by Wichita, select that and move it over here to selected cities. Then I will go here to keyword business type and I'll put in attorneys. Once I start to type in there, it starts to show things on the list. And I'll select attorneys and add it here to my selected keywords. And then I will update the count to tell me how many that the database finds. And it found 828 attorneys here in Wichita. When I click the search button, it brings up a list of all of those results, all 828. And it brings them up by the order of their sales revenue. So the largest firm with 100 to 500 million in sales is Stinson Leonard Street. When I click on the business, it will give me a detailed profile listing. And I think you'll be amazed at how much information is on each one of these businesses in this database. So this is what a business profile will look like. It gives the business name, Stinson Leonard Street. They're located at 1625 North Waterfront Parkway in Suite 300 here in Wichita. There is a Google Maps and directions. If you click on that, it'll take you straight to their Google Maps uh, information. Next, it gives you their direct telephone number, tells you what their main line of business is, in this case, law firms and also gives you a quick hyperlink to their company website. It tells us they're in Cedric County, Wichita metro area. Over in the demographic profile here, they have over a thousand employees. And last year, their revenue numbers were 183 million plus. Uh, it doesn't tell, tell how long they've been in business, but if, if it did, does in, in a business profile, it will have the year established and tell you when they started, if that information is available. Tells you whether it's a public corporation or private. In this case, it's a private company. 
This is the business credit rating that I was talking about earlier. And this company has a 100 excellent business credit rating. So they definitely pay all their bills on time. If they had any current job postings, they would link them in this section here. Again, this is uh, contracted through Indeed.com. So those job listings and direct ads postings would be right here. I mentioned the industry codes earlier, and the SIC codes, standard industrial classification codes, 8511 and-003 represents law firms. And then 8111-001 represents attorneys. And then the longer number, the NAICS code, North American in, uh, Industry Classification Code is 541110. And that signifies offices of lawyers. But using those industry codes, uh, you can find out who all is in your uh, market area or in your line of business. So with that, we could put in your industry code uh, bring up all of the similar businesses in the city, in the state, or in the country. So that's one good way to do market research when you're fleshing out your business plan is to come use this database, find out who your competition is, find out how big the market is. Uh, next, you have a QR code in this area. So if your tablet or smartphone has a QR reader on your phone, you can scan it, take a snapshot of this and it will instantly add the contacts to your phone. This is the area where you find your competition. So the area competitors, these are going to be attorney, firm, attorney firms that are a competition and it gives links to their uh, business profiles as well if you want to go in and, and investigate each one of those. It also gives their address and telephone number. It gives about the top 10 to start with. On this side over here, you have their historical uh, sales revenue for the last five years. So in this way, when you're doing your market research, you can tell whether a company is stable or whether the industry is declining or whether it's increasing. So are they uh, having steady sales? Are their sales declining due to COVID-19 or due to other uh, issues. Then uh, down here below, it has their employees uh, trend for the last five years. So again, it tells you whether they're maintaining their employee level, if they're laying people off, or if they're needing to add employees because it's a growing business. So in this case, it looks like uh, they're fairly stable industries. If you're doing any kind of uh, marketing for nearby businesses, this will have businesses that are also in Waterfront Front Parkway. So sometimes people like to do mailers or circulars and add that uh, uh, to their marketing uh, information. Over here in this profile, it has the executive, executive directory. So it tells you who the office manager are and some of the other key officers. And this is the section where you'll find email addresses for individuals too. But it's always good to have a name uh, uh, to match with a company uh, when you're marketing to them or you're trying to reach somebody specifically in the company. So this is where you'll find the uh, name and, and email information. The internet presence is a fairly new section of A to Z offer. Offering, but it will give their website links. Uh, if they have a Facebook presence, LinkedIn, um, Twitter account, anything like that, those will be listed here in the internet presence. And then finally, it gives the estimated annual expenditures. So in this case, this is a big firm and they're going to have uh, big expenditures in all of these major business areas of counting, advertising, business insurance, uh, legal, they probably do their own legal, office equipment, uh, their rent, their technology, PCs, networks, uh, their telecom and utilities. So if you were doing a business plan for a small mom and pop business, you would probably want to find a business similar in size and uh, type that you're thinking about doing and see what their 
annual expenditures. These would be much lower for a mom and pop business that's uh, say in the, the Delano area or near downtown. So you can kind of get an idea of what those expenses might run for your particular business if you're doing a business plan and trying to estimate your expenses for your, for your lender and for your bank loan. So that's what a business profile looks like. Again, there's over 30 million businesses in this database. So the, your imagination is the limit on how you'd like to use it. At any time, you can download, print, or email the information to yourself. So you can, can create custom lists of either your competition or your market or uh, potential business customers that you might like to advertise to. Going back to the uh, home page button, we'll take you back to the initial search. Uh, put in another business here, local business. Show you what their profile looks like. John, you got Wichita Falls instead of Wichita. No, there's no nifty nut house in Wichita Falls. <laughs> Thanks for catching that, Ron. Uh, yeah, Nifty Nut House, uh, located here in Wichita. Now there's a couple of other nifty businesses in Wichita too. But let's take a look at Nifty. Um, they've been in business, wow, since 1937. Sales revenue last year was over $2 million, so that's a lot of candy and nuts. And 30 employees, and I know they always have seasonal employee upgrades during the Christmas season. Uh, gives their address, telephone information, links to their website. Uh, they show 95 on their credit rating, excellent, so they pay their bills as well. You'll see their industry codes are a little different. 5441 is candy, nut, and confectionery stores. Uh, they also have uh, candy and confectionery wholesale, other products, chocolate and cocoa, salted and roasted nuts. So each of those are going to have their own industry codes. And then down below are the, the NAICS codes. And again, you can use those. Once you find out your industry code for your business, you can find out all you want about your market, how big your market is, and who your competition is when you're fleshing out your business plan. This is that QR code if you want to add Nifty into your phone or tablet. Uh, here are some of the competitors for Nifty, some of the other smoke and candy shops here, here in town. Ferris Wheel, Popcorner, Sweet Sisters Fudge. Looks like they're also fairly steady. That gives you their five-year revenue trend. Fairly stable candy business here in Wichita and have maintained their employee base as well. You'll notice their annual expenditure in these business categories are a lot less than that huge legal firm we just looked at. So those can give you an idea of how much they spend annually in these business categories. They list the uh, owner, Mr. Steve John, administrator and they give a link to their website down here below. So that is the A to Z database. Um, they have introductory videos that you can get more information about how to search the database. During the week, they have a free chat service so you can talk in real time chat if you have a question or a concern about the database or how it's used. They also have this new uh, area called A to Z University, where they do live training webinars that are held six times a week. So if you're interested in attending a training webinar, you can certainly do that. And then the uh, data quality, I like to mention this, people wonder where they get this information, uh, A to Z up in Omaha. They have a variety of sources that they use to collect this information. And this data quality area tells you how they do it. They use annual reports. Uh, they use the Edgar database and the Security Exchange Commission filings that it's public information on public corporations. So they gather 
sales revenue and number of employees out of there. They use corporate registers. They also use public records, things like register of deeds, uh, county records. They use national directory assistance data. And they use thousands of yellow and white pages and directories. And they use business directories. They also do uh, telephone verification, and I've talked with them in the past. They try to do about 80% of the database is telephone verified information. So they, they will actually call businesses to verify information and get as much as they can. They also have a contact uh, section of this website where you can submit your own information to A to Z. So if you'd like to have your business listed there, which I would recommend because libraries all over the country use this database to do referrals. When people call the library, they ask for a flower shop or a candy shop or a lawn mowing service. This is our go-to source to do referrals. So I'd recommend getting a free listing with A to Z database once you get your business established. Uh, they also do deep web mining. So they'll search the web for business information and they also use the post office national change of address system to gather information. On the uh, residential database, on that, the 240 million listings they have, they get their data from the national directory assistance data, from real estate deed and tax information, from voter registration data, uh, mail order data, anytime you fill out a warranty card or just purchase a product and you fill it out, whether it's in print or online. A lot of that information gets repackaged and sold to companies such as A to Z and, and that information can end, end or show up in these databases. And also thousands of white pages. The uh, job database section I mentioned was uh, contracted through with Indeed.com. So their job postings are uh, direct uh, from, from Indeed. The 2 million new businesses are acquired through the Secretary of State's office when new businesses register with each state. And the register of deed information for each uh, county and around the country is where they get their new movers and new homeowners. So whenever you purchase a home and file with the register of deeds, that information is collected and put into these types of databases. Also, that post office uh, change of address system uh, can, will catch the new movers that move from apartment to apartment. And then finally, the uh, healthcare database information, it comes from state license filings, comes from the US DEA information, and the national provider directory files. So that gives you a little bit of information about the data quality. So that is the A to Z database. I think we will switch gears now and show you the Small Business Reference Center. So again, we'll go back to our Wichita Library webpage, our list of library databases. Up here at the top is alphabet, so I'll hit the S and it'll scroll me down to Small Business Reference Center. Uh, this business database covers all kinds of business types covers a help and advice section, how to's on creating business plans that lead to successful funding. It also has nearly 300 full text business periodical, trade journals, dozens of full text reference books uh, that are specific to each state. So again, this database is available 24 hours a day with your library card. At this point, when you click on it, it would ask for your library barcode number and the last four digits of your phone number. And then it will take you into the database. Uh, we talked about, Ron talked about business plans today. So you can put in uh, business plan as your search. and get some simple business plans. So it has chapters of different books on drafting a, a business plan. It has articles about business plan. It has types of business plans. So this is the first 10 results of over 30,000 results, a large database of business plan information. 
You can narrow it down by either magazine uh, type of entries, trade journals, or by book information, by reports, by case studies, or by individual business plans. So when you click on that category, it will bring up those specific listings. So here's some of the sample business plans that came up. We have Bee's Circus, Barney's Bullpen, Wilson Family Peach Farm, uh, Vet Cat Harbor Bed and Breakfast, Twin Brothers Construction. So this will give you their full business plans as well as their charts and graphs included. So you can see what a business plan can look like. When you click on the PDF full text, it will give you the full text of that article. Also, this small business uh, reference center allows you to search in different business areas. So when you click on that, you can search uh, all kinds of business topics like accounting, buying a business, closing a business, hiring employees, financing your business, legal issues, management, marketing, uh, sales. Uh, talks about starting and managing a nonprofit. And then finally, selling your business, having an exit strategy. So lots of business areas. They also get lots of trade information and industry information by small business type. So here's an alphabetical listing of all the industry information by small business type. And then finally, they have their, uh, let's see, their business basics area. So things on coaching employees, conducting successful meetings, doing business on eBay, how to interview people, um, marketing your business, starting a business from home, tax deductions, and starting a business um, less than $1,000 for retirees, for stay-at-home mom and dads, and for students. So lots of good uh, business information. And the last area here I wanna mention is this startup business kit by state. So you can get state specific startup information uh, for all 50 states. And they do have small business videos as well. These are gonna interview business owners, talk about lessons learned, lectures and how to videos on all, specs, all aspects of starting and growing your business. So that is the Small Business Reference Center. And finally, we will look at the Business Source Premier. Again, they're in alphabetical order. So your Business Source Premier is coverage of leading scholarly business journals that go back to 1886. They have full text articles for non-journal content, including financial data, books, industry and market reports, company profiles, and more. So this will cover trade journals, business magazines, business journals from around the country. So you can get all kinds of information, both historical all the way to current day articles in Business Source Premier. It's generally uh, just keyword searched, so you can put in your business type or, or any keywords and hit the search button to get relevant articles. You can also put in specific company names so you can get company profiles. You can get industry profiles, industry information, country reports on economics and political background if you're doing business in other countries, exporting. And you can get market research reports as well. So this is another area where you can flesh out your business plan and get uh, market research information. Okay, well, that pretty much takes care of today's program. So thank you for participating in today's program. I've shared a link in the chat for a quick survey. Uh, please take a few minutes to complete the survey and we look at each survey and use these to help plan our future programs. Your feedback is very valuable to us. 
if you are John? yes uh, do you want to mention the business plan reference set that you've got oh certainly uh, we have 48 volumes of the business plan handbook which uh, you may have noticed when you were scrolling through at the pre-program uh, PowerPoint business plan handbooks has 48 volumes and hundreds of successfully funded business plans. So if you're looking for a template to use, uh, you can grab one of those. You can make photocopies, you can make cell phones, or you can contact me and I will uh, scan and email it to you. So it has hundreds of successfully funded business plans. It's a fantastic resource to help get you started. Those are located in our business neighborhood, which is on the second floor of the Advanced Learning Library downtown. Uh, currently, you would just need to ask for those at our staff at the front door, and we will bring those down for you and let you study those. Are there any other questions in the chat that we've received that I can touch on? John, let me uh, add to that. I don't think there's a single 30-page business plan in that reference set. Some of them are only five pages, some are 10 or 12 pages, but I, I don't recall seeing a 30 page uh, or more. No, no, I have not either. Okay, if you're interested in upcoming library pro programs, please visit our website. That's www.wichitalibrary.org slash events for a complete calendar. Thank you again for your support of the Wichita Public Library. And I want to especially thank Ron Lunsford for his fantastic presentation of One Page Business Plan. And this ends today's program. Thank you.